Hi. Um, I'm going to use the mic on. Is my voice clearer this way? Yeah. Oh, just okay. <laughs> so, yep. Thanks, Roslan. He's he's been awesome and he's been supporting me uh, all this while being here. So when I came in just now, one thing is that I got a lot of questions like, why am I here? Um, who am I? And how did I get involved with One Young World? So basically, I'm just going to start from the very first day. Uh, it started out as an accident. Uh, basically, what happened was uh, a friend of mine, actually, I was uh, Facebooking one night, and he just said, you know, there's this One Young World going on. And I noticed that there, there was this One Young World going on two months ago, but I just didn't join in because I thought, hey, I'm out of university. I should have retired from attending conferences. So my friend said, you know what, I'm just going to nominate you. So I said, okay, go ahead. And uh, a month later, I got a letter all the way from UK, from the organizer, and said that you are one of the Malaysian delegates out of the 80 plus that were nominated that got one of the highest votes. So you were elected by your peers to represent your country. So again, you see, that's by accident because um, I was nominated and uh, Malaysia gave me the baton, you know. I uh, did some little bit of campaigning here and there on Facebook uh, and on blogs, you know, it was widespread, so the power of social media. And what happened after that is I met up with Roslan, and this is the part where another group of you just now asked me, you know, um, your, your investment being here by MSC Malaysia, what does it entail? Well, basically, when I spoke to Roslan, I said, you know what, I'm not coming to London to have a free stay, to have a free lunch, you know. Um, I want to do something more. So what happened is I pitched to Roslan, I said, I'm going to try my best. My main goal is to get Malaysian youths on the world map in a sense will make an impact because I'll tell you how big is this One Young World. This One Young World is by right one of the biggest youth summit in the world where they have united 192 countries youths propor proportionately where what happened is that all these youths are what they deem as the most influential leaders. How do they decide that? It's because they use social media like YouTube and Facebook to actually let youths vote. So they're mirroring the Barack Obama campaign, where if you're really influential in your country, you should be able to win the election uh, in your country, you know, by your peers to represent your country. So basically, when I saw that, I was also attracted to the fact that we'll be mentored by global mentors, like we were mentored by Kofi Annan, Sir Bob Geldof, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Tony Fernandez, and I'm going to mention their name again because something exciting has just happened. Uh, Muhammad Yunus. So basically what happened is that um, I thought this would be an excellent platform and I saw the media that were involved, BBC World was the anchor sponsor to the media, so we have global coverage to over 200 million households around the world. We have CNN, we have Reuters, we have all the biggest media in the world you can imagine. Now the question that played through my mind that time was how do I get Malaysia on the map? Internationally, sad to say, people tend to assume that Malaysia is just another country in between of Thailand and Singapore. Right. So I was thinking, how do we get ourselves on the map? So I met up with Roslan. I over coffee. I say, um, I would like to, you know, seek out some investment into the one young delegation, but with a certain clause. The clauses were, I want this report to be funded. And when I told Roslan, I said, the plan of this report is that I'm going to get as many youth leaders in Malaysia, like all of you sitting here in this room, to participate and share your solutions and ideas with the world. Literally, you have just did that. Okay, so what happened after that was Roslan agreed, it was great, he sent an email to the CEO of MDEC within two days, got a reply saying that good to go, and I had like around um, one week to do this report, and I have to thank you all in UKEC because you would have received the Facebook messages from Zen Xing, I, you know, uh, and I'm pretty sure more or less you have actually participated or are connected or have heard about the One Young World our future says report and your voices are being heard. So what happened was um, after that when when this report was produced it came all, all the way to London and here is where I'm gonna try to grab your mind a little to relate to the entrepreneurial skills which I've learned throughout the years. I was talking to the organizers and I was actually negotiating with them. I said how can Malaysia be part of the panel? Because in the, in, in the One Young World, the highlight is you want to be part of one of the six panels. The panels were on global business, global health, interfaith, uh, religion, dialogue. So I pitched to it and I actually, well, kind of pressured the organizers. You know, I sent a lot of proposals. I did a lot of videos. Some of you would have liked YouTube and saw my videos pitching on One Young World. The organizers said we needed five videos. I sent them 15. 
So what happened is everybody around the world said, hey, you're that Malaysian delegate. It's unfortunate because when I did my video, my glasses were off. So when I wore my glasses, people couldn't recognize me. But when I took it off, they're like, aren't you that Malaysian guy? Because my YouTube <laughs> video just floated, you know, the, the whole page. So that was one of the ways to get Malaysian notice uh, from a personal capacity as far as I could do. Um, and then what happened is I was really blessed that I got selected to be one of the six countries to be on the media panel. Awesome. No, no, I'm asking this question. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So why do you do all this? Why, why, do you, why, do you, why do you bother doing it? Why do you spend it? What the hell, man? You're 22, you got better things to do, but why do you do all this? Well, um, this is a long story, but to cut it short, when I was in New Zealand, I've seen a lot of potential Malaysians, highly talented Malaysians like yourself. But I feel, I'm generalizing here, that we Malaysians, we suffer from a syndrome that is a inferior complex, what is it? Com what, inferior complexity syndrome? Inferiority complex. Yeah. Inferiority complex where we are good, but because of our culture, we are taught to be humble and not show it up. And what happened is we get drowned, you know, among the crowd which are not so good, so it's a waste of talent. So because of that, I took it as a main mission to say, I'm going to showcase Malaysian youths, but I'm not going to do it alone. I'm not enough. So I want all your voices, and that was how the report was launched. So basically, that was the reason why um, I did the One Young World Report. So when I got selected to new media panel, I was really excited because that was a chance for me to appear on BBC World. And I did appear online um, through the news to talk about new media and how it's influencing youths taking change into our hands, not waiting for governments. We are no longer um, you know, exposed to filtered information, uh, information that are tip, knowledge that are tip. So it all started and this report came. I arrived in London last week with these guys. You know, it's been great. Uh, the summit was in the Excel Center, and the next moment I realized is all your voices that were collected from here, there were, we connected with 500 national young leaders. The young leaders include people like Arafat, you know, Zen Xing, who connected us with 36,000 more youths like yourself to take the multiple choice survey. And the next moment we realized was uh, Kofi Annan was posing with your report. Sir Bob Gildorf was seen, uh, you can actually check my Facebook for the picture, sitting on stage, and it was at live. He had a report which the Malaysia um, flag was so visible. Muhammad Yunus had a copy of your report. Uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Tony Fernandez has two of your reports. So basically all the big names, the global counselors now have your voices in this book. You know, one of the challenges that I shared with people, I said, is it possible to fly 36,000 of my peers, my colleagues, my comrades, like all of you, down to London? And the answers I get is, you're crazy. No crazy. way. You know, so I said, okay, why not I try to collect all your voices here, and at least there is something to present. So that was what happened uh, over in One Young World, and you know, it's how crazy ideas. And I would like to quote Rostan again. He said, when you have a good intention to help people and to change things for the better, you have divine intervention. Within that one day, um, with this report, the founders of One Young World, you know, they were fleshing out this report telling countries, 192 countries here, yeah, and this was even ad-streamed online, saying that Malaysia has set the benchmark. 